Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In the previous video, we looked at rendering in the batch group. We also looked at how the render token system gives a new level of naming and organization to the renders. However, one aspect we haven't discussed in the batch group is iterations. This allows you to save various stages of your flow graph as it develops during production. You can also create multiple variations or versions of your flow graph depending on your artistic license and client approval. We'll cover all of this during this video. Now, for artists using previous versions of the Flame products, iterations would have been known as snapshots. But aside from the name change, there has been a rethink as to how they work and how they fit within the workflows. Previously, iterations or snapshots were saved in a separate folder disassociated from the batch component. So managing and tracking the data was actually a manual process. With Flame Premium 2016, the iterations, which are generated from the batch setup, are now stored within the same batch group. So as a complete unit, the batch group owns the flow graph, the media in the batch reels, and any iterations you create during the creative process. Now let's look at how iterations work. Let's say you have started working on a flow graph. At any point, you can decide to define an instance or iteration of the flow graph. It's like capturing a progression of your work at a specific point in time, and then you continue to build on that. So if you are working in a batch group, and you want to create an iteration for the first time, click the Iterate button. Now at first, nothing seems to happen. But if you look closely at the Iterate button, you will notice a drop-down arrow appear next to the button. When you click and hold down the drop-down menu, you will see your first iteration. Firstly, it is named after the batch group entry in the media panel. Secondly, it has been assigned an iteration number. The naming is actually driven by the naming token system that we will look at later. I just want to point out that all iterations will always start from 001. Don't select the iteration, but take a look at the batch group in the media panel. Within the batch group, the batch setup now reflects the name and numbering of the first iteration. So as soon as you click Iterate, the iteration is created and it is the currently active flow graph in batch. So moving forward in time, the flow graph has progressed on a bit more. Let's create another iteration. This time, you are prompted to increment a new iteration or replace the current one. Click Increment and the current flow graph iterates. Once again, this is reflected in the media panel and the iteration number is 002. Now, if you want to go back to the first iteration, you can click the Iteration drop-down menu and choose Iteration 001. You can choose to replace the existing flow graph or append the old flow graph to the existing one. One interesting point is if you called up an old iteration and worked on it, the next time you iterate, the flow graph will take on the next available iteration number. In this case, it would be 003. So you can iterate your work in a very freeform fashion. There is no limit to the amount of iterations you can create. Now using the pull-down menu, you can switch iterations without having the media panel visible. However, if you look in the media panel, you may not see any iteration entries. If this is the case, call up the contextual menu. Choose Show Batch Iterations. A new folder appears in the batch group called Iterations. Looking inside this folder, you will find the saved iterations. So hiding the iterations helps prevent the batch group getting too crowded in the media panel. However, displaying the iterations means that you can use the familiar drag and drop workflow. You can also edit iterations, delete the bad ones, and keep the important ones. You can also access the media sources used in different iterations if you're tracking down a particular element. And finally, you can color code iteration entries. So when you move between them, 
their color coding will be retained as well as displayed in the name field. Now this is a good time to point out that the batch iterations are stored in batch. However, they are still independent of the batch group. This means you can drag out the iteration and save it elsewhere. Obviously, the starting point is keeping everything within the batch group, but this is totally flexible. A very important detail to remember when creating iterations is that the flow graph and the schematic reels are saved in the iteration. Even the state of the schematic reels and content with any editorial decisions will be restored as it was. Now, the shelf reels are part of the batch group, but they are not part of a particular iteration. In fact, they don't play any part in the construction of a complete flow graph. So, it is advisable to save the batch group and the desktop to keep all your work and not just rely on the iterations. Now, the next item I'd like to discuss is versioning. So, you have a number of iterations in the batch group. As mentioned earlier, each iteration tracks the progression of a particular flow graph as it's developed. You will get to a point where you have a finished result, but you might need to create multiple versions of it for a variety of deliverables and client approval. This concept is no different from the versioning techniques used in the SHOT Publish workflow. So let's say that your current iteration is the first or master version that you will develop further or distribute to the rest of the facility. In order to define the version, you need to change the batch setup's name. You could select the batch setup in the media panel and use the contextual menu to rename it. Or you can also shift click on the batch setup name in the text box. In both cases, this will call up the dynamic naming window. If you just clicked on the text, you would have to manually enter the tokens. It is mandatory to keep the batch name token and the iteration token. You need this in order to identify the batch group as well as number the iterations. But you can add more tokens or manually edit the text field to define your version. For example, in between the two tokens, add A. So looking at the preview field, you will have the particular shot that is defined as version A and the iteration number for when you develop the flow graph. As an extra tip, you could even add the username token or user nickname token if you want to identify yourself or other artists working on this iteration. Click Rename and the batch setup will update. Now if you click Iterate again, this time, Batch will detect a different name for the Batch Setup. So it will ask you if you want to carry on with the current iteration numbering or reset it. Click Reset. When you look at the Iterations folder, you will see your initial iterations, but you will also see a version where the iteration counter has reset back to 001. You can now carry on iterating for this version until you need to make another one and so forth. The token naming system also brings another enhanced aspect to managing iterations. For example, let's say you need to modify the shot number or name of a particular batch group. So you would click on the batch group name to make it editable. Now change the batch group name. When you press Enter, all the components within the batch group that derive their names from the batch name token will update. So when you use the token naming system, components within the batch group will dynamically take on the new changes. This includes the batch setup, render node, write node and iterations. The other good news is that you can go into the preferences menu and in the batch settings, you can define the default batch iteration name. This is stored in the user profile. If you need to have the default batch iteration name based on project standardization or facility standardization, please refer to the documentation for the various scripting options. Now here is one last point before you move on to the next video. By having everything stored in the batch group, tasks such as wiring or archiving is simpler than previous versions of Flame Premium. 
And if you want to consolidate the iterations within the batch group, just delete the ones you don't want and keep the rest before wiring or archiving. In the next video, we'll start going through the desktop timeline-centric workflow with batch effects. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.